Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dryer Days Art Studio. I'm Catherine. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm going to be working on this three tiered cupcake stand in this video. I wanted to go a little darker with this one. I thought maybe I would have it as like a Halloween cupcake stand, but I didn't get it out in time, such as 2020. Um, I did get these molds back in July into my store, and I'm just now getting to try them out. I know I'm going to get this question, so I'll just start out with saying that I used about 18 ounces of resin total for all of these. And I'm going to be using my Blue Nile Fantasy Film today. I'm going to be using some black matte pigment, some deep blue pigment, and some blue pearl pigment all from my store. I'm also going to throw in a little bit of the Sea Pearl Sparkler. And I'm also using Total Boats Tabletop resin. So all of these items and products you'll be able to find in the description below. So I'm just going to start out here with cutting up some pieces of the Blue Nile fantasy film because I wanted to sort of place them around here in the mold and uh, again this was my first time trying out these molds and um, next time I would do things a little bit differently I'll explain that at the end uh, but it's always good I think to include in these videos things that maybe went a little wrong or awry just so I can let you guys know that so maybe you can try things differently uh, and not have to make the same uh, discoveries or challenges or even mistakes that I made. So here I'm just going to start out with getting some of my pigments in the cups and getting myself organized, getting myself ready to go. This is something that I touched on in my last video and my next few videos are probably going to touch on this as far as silicone molds go. For these pieces right here, what I was planning on doing was have the side facing down away from us so the shiny side of the mold was gonna be the top of the dish. This is kind of where my discovery came in. That bottom dish there, the largest one that I'm rubbing the resin around right now, um, they all each have a peg on them, but that one has one uh, that's kind of recessed in there a little bit so that actually your screw for your hardware can screw in there and be flush with the bottom of the dish and because with some of them your nail is kind of sticking out a little bit right so it's almost making the stand kind of teeter a little bit but with these molds that bottom one has one uh, beveled so that the screw will fit right in there you won't have that issue with the bottom dish but you have to have it so that the piece is facing up and I'll show more of that at the end I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more but I had this so that my finished product was facing down away from us and I should have had it so that it was facing up towards the camera if that makes any sense. So what I did here was I just laid a thin layer of Total Bolt clear resin, pop in any bubbles, uh, and that's because I like the effects that it gives when you have uh, the clear down first. It almost gives sort of a cell effect. Um, and also I wanted to have a little bit of resin laid down uh, before I laid the fantasy film onto the surface of the mold. And this here is actually some deep blue pigment mixed with some black matte pigment to give us a really nice dark blue. And I'm just going to heat that up and move it around a little. I wanted to add that sea pearl sparkler around the outside edge. So that's what I'm doing here. So I just added a little bit of that sea pearl sparkler in with some clear resin. And it's just going to give us some cool effects and just pop out a little bit, give us some more texture, make the piece a little bit more interesting. And there's the lovely top of my head, but you can see I have my respirator on. And this is just your little video reminder to please, please, please wear an organic vapors respirator when you are doing anything with resin. I have my favorite one linked in the description below. It's from Amazon. It's really inexpensive and it'll help keep you safe. I also have a window cracked for some ventilation. And as you can see, I'm wearing my black nitrile gloves as well, uh, which you can also find in the video description. I find the black nitrile gloves give the best defense against the resin I never get any skin irritation or anything like that they really protect me very very well another kit in my arsenal uh, for resin protection is the baby wipes as they help get resin off absolutely everything including your skin and they are safe and non-toxic and I also have those linked below as well 
just going around here blending in that sea pearl with the rest of the resin here so that I have a really nice base. And now I'm going to take those pre-cut pieces of the Blue Nile Fantasy film and just lay them right in and around the center here. And uh, some people have asked me if I carry larger sheets. Um, right now these come in four inch by 10 foot long rolls of the fantasy film. Um, I don't offer them larger right now simply for the sake of shipping. It just would get really cumbersome and be uh, difficult for me to ship that because all my other items come in such smaller packaging. Like I'm doing here, I mean, you can cut them, you can make them any shape you want. You can really use them to fill out a bigger space uh, depending on how you cut them. Uh, cutting them does not alter the effects of this film at all and yeah you can really do a lot I mean 10 feet of this that's that's a lot of fantasy film so it may only be four inches wide but you can really manipulate it and and use it for whatever size piece you need really and now I'm just using my orange stick to gently push out any air bubbles that I see forming underneath the fantasy film I did a lot with my heat gun before even laying the fantasy film down just to really make sure I popped as many of the bubbles as possible. And I'm sorry my head is in the way here, but I really wanted to get on top of each dish and make sure I was really getting those bubbles out as much as I could. And just heating things up a little bit more to get any extra bubbles out of there. Moving some little ones out. And I actually don't mind if there's some bubbles in there. I think it gives kind of a cool look and texture uh, to the finished piece. But I know I am kind of OCD about the bubbles, so I wanted to get them out as much as possible. Uh, this fantasy film is sort of more of a cellophane base as well. So if you hit it with a lot of heat uh, or, um, you know, if I really were to leave the heat gun on it for a long time, it would kind of cinch up and even give different effects. Keep that in mind if you're doing like an art piece or a geode piece, because that might look really cool too with this fantasy film. Okay, so now I need to fill out the rest of these molds, fill them up, and this is actually my blue pearl pigment from Dryer Days Art Studio. And next I'm going to use some of that deep blue mixed with the black matte, giving us a beautiful dark blue here. Okay, and be careful not to overfill these because if you saw my two-tier cupcake video of the two-tier cupcake stand, I overfilled it and it filled right over those pegs in the middle and my husband had to re-drill a hole for me. So be very careful not to overfill these and do not cover those center pegs. I'm just going to continue to add a little bit more resin in these until they are completely filled. Again, being careful not to cover that center peg. And then I will sit and let these cure for about 24 hours. This is always the exciting and a little nerve wracking part as we're demolding here. Uh, but again, I would have wanted the side facing up to me right now to have been the top of the plate, but I did this the reverse way. Just gonna use a little orange stick to lightly push on that. I'm gonna demold here. And there is that first large plate. Now I am going to use a black marker from Sharpie. It's a water-based marker and it gives a really nice matte finish around the edges of these. Um, it does scuff off and rub off pretty easily. So, oh, there you can see how it's beveled right there and how that would have been great if that was the bottom, 
<laughs> but again, I did it the reverse way. And so now this is the top of the plate. And so I have to put it in on this side and there we don't have the bevel. So when I put the screw in, the screw is going to be on the underneath so that it's not like completely flat on there. But that's how I made it. That's how we're going to stick with it. I'm going to go with it. Um, so anyway, uh, this hardware is also available in my store. It's a black mat. And so I did the edges in that black mat paint marker from Sharpie. Like I said, it does scuff off pretty easily. So you may want to do some kind of a clear coat or a flood coat over them if you use that marker. I'm not opting to on here because I think I'm going to keep this cupcake stand. There's the marker right there. I'm going to keep this one for myself and I'm not really worried about scuffing it or a client scuffing it up. Um, so I'm not going to do a flood coat in this case. And there it is, put together nicely. I love that black matte hardware. Again, available at dryerdaysartstudio.com. And here's the finished product. You can see the little flecks of sea pearl in there. They just give it a little extra something. So thank you so, so much for watching this video. Please check out dryerdaysartstudio.com for all of the products used in this video. Come find me on Instagram at dryerdays. And until next time, everybody, keep on pouring.